Ladies and gentlemen, tonight, Frank Warren's Sports Network, sponsored by the News of the World, Big on Boxing, the Edinburgh Evening News, live and exclusive on ITV4 and on the internet with www.frankwarren.tv, proudly presents 12 three minute rounds of boxing for the Featherweight Championship of Great Britain. The officials have been appointed by the British Boxing Board of Control. The steward in charge at ringside, Mr. Derry Trainer. Timekeeper at the bell, Jim Kirkwood. The three scoring judges at ringside for this assignment are Phil Edwards and Howard Foster from England and Victor Lachlan from Scotland. Finally, when the action commences, the star referee in charge of the action, Mr. Paul Thomas from Derby. And so, introducing to you firstly, the challenger this evening. Boxing out of the red corner, wearing the green, yellow, black, white and red coloured shorts. At the weigh-in yesterday, he scaled exactly on the championship limit of nine stones exactly. He has a proud undefeated record, 10 contests, 10 wins. Four of those wins coming by way of knockout, presenting from Leicester, Rendell to Tone Monroe. And opposing him, boxing out of the blue corner, wearing the sky blue colored shorts trimmed with silver and the white accessories. At yesterday's weighing, he scaled eight stone, 13 and a half pounds. He also is an undefeated boxer. 13 contests, 13 wins. Four of those wins coming by way of knockout. Tonight, he makes the proud first defense of his title, presenting from Withenshaw, the featherweight champion of Great Britain, Andy Morris. The referee, Mr. Paul Thomas, will now give out his final instructions. 12 three minute rounds. Okay, Andy, okay. Remember what I said to you in the dressing room. There were no shots in the kidney area and nothing around the back of the necks. And remember to defend yourselves at all times unless you hear me shout, start boxing. Touch gloves, best of luck to both of you. Well, we will see. The talking is over and there's been plenty of it in the run up to this fight. Rendell Munro has talked a big fight. He said that it is his destiny to win this title. Andy Morris, well, he's mainly just smiled his way through it. And his trainer, the experienced man from Openshaw, Bob Shannon, had said to Rendell Munro at the weigh-in, three rounds, that's what it's going to take, three rounds. Well, we will see who's going to be the aggressor. Munro, certainly the scrapper. Morris is the silky technician. Doesn't do anything, as I said, too flash, but he doesn't do too much wrong either. Munro straight away trying to get right into the face of Morris and trying to carry the fight to him. Well, Munro will have to pressure Andy Morris. Morris is a real cute, cool customer. Does everything by the book. Doesn't really waste a shot. He's a good textbook fighter. He go. really is. Uh, Munro has to carry the fight to him and just outwork him, take him out of his stride. Well, Morris just clipped Munro with a right hand counter as Munro came boring in behind that southpaw right hand lead and Morris looks as though he's settled into this quite well just taking a little look at Rendell Munro the 25 year old bin man from the Northfields estate in Leicester keeps himself fit by running his round and you see when you see him front on you talk about athletes who are cut he really hasn't got a spare ounce on him Rendell Munro he's in terrific shape Decent amateur footballer as well, I'm told. Well, as you can see from Monroe, the southpaw stance, the right-handed uh, fighter, just being nice and busy, trying to be as busy as he can possibly be. But in Andy Morris, you'll find somebody that can fight off the front and, the f and off the back foot. I was really impressed with Morris when he won the title, uh, the vacant title in beating John Simpson, just the way in which he survived through the 12-round distance. When he came to the end of it, he looked so fresh and full of 
full of speed and maybe that's something to do with his training regimes there's a village in Derbyshire called Charlesworth and a steep road there they call it the Monks Road and Bob Shannon has his athletes running up that with weights around their ankles weights around their wrists and he says quite rightly I think that so much of a fighter's strength and conditioning comes through leg work and he's got terrific terrific footwork as Andy Morris very well balanced fighter he, he certainly is John he's got a lot of rhythm he's got a nice style he's very very busy you know got big 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 tips for this kid I think he's going to go a long way in this in his professional ranks you know he's British champion already uh, but he'll have his workout tonight against Munro you know Morris is a big featherweight he really is but Munro is, is bigger than he is physically Munro just slicking, slipping a little smile to Morris Morris catching him with two good straight right hand counters Munro had landed with a couple of decent looking hooks but now in the closing seconds of the round it's Morris who's starting to up the pace and this is the sort of performance of course which catches the eyes of the judge experienced pros always raise the pace in the closing stages of the round and that's what Morris has done started cagely had a little look at Munro and he's come on strong in the last few seconds and probably done enough to win it corner words of advice from one of the wise old figures of the British fight scene Mike Shinfield close opening round Duke but I think perhaps Morris had the better of the last minute and landed some really good quality right hand counters and possibly that did enough to edge it yeah I'll just go with the champion in that first round just a little bit busier as you said John a little bit more accurate uh, caught Munro towards the end of the round and was just looking to follow up on it he's just working out the southpaw style he's just moving around to his left and he's coming through with nice hooks, just keeps, just keeps moving his natural way, which is what you're supposed to do against the Southpaw style. Rendell Munro has got points victories against Baz Carey and David Bailey, both men you'll remember from fighting Amir Khan, and he's strong and trying to come forward, trying to pressure Morris, and gets in with a nice little left hand to the head as he worked his way in with the right hand into the body. Oh, that's better, that's better from Munro. A little bit of a slappy look to those punches he came in, but he was just sufficiently quick and strong and direct to just create problems, but that's good work from Morris again. Now, I would expect Munro to be in this fight till about the halfway stage, and then I expect to change in the pattern of the fight. You know, Morris, Morris we know he's a, he's, a, he's a throwback fighter. He can do 15 rounds at a hard pace if needs be. Well, we just don't know what Monroe's made of. Hasn't been past the six-round limit before. They say if you can do six, you can do eight. But we've got a proposed 12-round fight in front of us. Well, Monroe said, only a couple of fights in 2005, and I've been an avoided man, and I'm going to show you exactly why. So far, not too much between them. Monroe is trying to force the pace, but the more accurate work just coming from Andy Morris, the 23-year-old from Withenshaw. And both these fighters have got plenty of support in the auditorium. The Munro fans right at the back of the tiered seats, directly opposite from where we're speaking, chanting all the way, trying to urge their man on. It's good work to the body from Morris, good body shots. Yeah, you can watch the champion just start to try and... He's working Munro, he's decided to make an attack to the body to bring down his high guard. And I expect him to have that sort of an attitude in this fight. He's going to work the body probably quite well and then come back with quick clusters to the head. Good body shot again from Morris. And he's just working away all the time. Nothing, as I said before, nothing too flashy, nothing spectacular, but he's just gradually starting to pick up the points and the more accurate shots. Just watch the way he picks his punches. He really doesn't miss a great deal. Good shot again, good right into the body of Munro. Munro, meanwhile, comes forward trying to brawl his way back into the fight. That was a real classy move there from the champion. He sunk a, a right uppercut come hook up into the midriff of, of Morris, of, um, of Munro, held him with the jab and just walks off. Well, Morris, another round.
Morris. Bob Shannon is the trainer giving words of advice. Been a trainer for 20 years, had a gym in Openshaw for about the last 14 or so, and he's creating a name for himself as one of the leading trainers in the country. And the Manchester fight scene is so hot at the moment, so many good young fighters in the northwest of the country. Well, those are borderline low punches from Morris. Thudded them in, a right hand and a left hand, but Munro didn't complain, keeps coming. See, Morris has the ability to punch on the move, and he punches very accurately. You know, they say he can't punch, but what he does is very, very effective. He punches with enough authority to stop you in your tracks. And what's happening now is that Monroe's being outworked. 13 wins, Andy Morris, undefeated as a professional. He's been a pro since 2003 those wins only four by knockout and he's just starting to just get the impression at this stage he's just got a little bit too much boxing ability for Munro there's no lack of desire from Munro no sense at all in which he's phased by the occasion he's trying to carry the fight to his opponent but he's just not at this stage quite good enough to make that intent really tell that's a sweet uppercut there from Morris as I said before, even when Morris isn't throwing punches, he's constantly bobbing and weaving, he rolls in and he rolls out excellently, and he keeps a tight guard. It's going to be hard for Monroe to penetrate that guard against the moving target. Monroe in his 11th professional fight, also made his debut back in 2003. See, Monroe needs to hit the target to get his confidence off, but what he finds in Andy Morris says that it's a constantly moving target. He moves left and right, right and left. Steps back, beautiful right uppercut he tried there, just missed. Munro hardly taking a backward step. He's trying to bully Morris backwards and you see when he gets in close, he tries to use his physical strength to push Morris back, but Morris completely unfazed by it. Interesting to know how the judges are scoring it. Of course, if it goes the distance, it goes to the three cards. Once upon a time, it was down to the referee in British title fights. Not so now. I tell you, Morris, sorry, John, but Morris, uh, Morris is such a classy mover. He really is. I mean, he's, he's looking busy at the minute, just doing nothing. And he's, he's, he's been musing uh, Munro with just his lateral movement. He's not throwing anything, he's just making him miss. And in, in doing so, he's t actually tiring Monroe. Clean sort of fight as well. No problems at all for the vastly experienced referee Paul Thomas to date. Good left hand from Monroe, but punished with a couple back from Morris, and then two good shots to the body. Good exchange, perhaps the best of the fight so far. Go on to your right. Andy Morris, I think, will be reasonably satisfied with the way things have gone so far. And in the corner between rounds, Rendell Munro's trainer, Jason Shinfield, was saying it's about work rate. You've got to step it up. Remember what we told you. You've got to boss the fight. You know you're strong, but use that strength and keep throwing shots. That's a left hand, which Morris didn't like. He thought that was low. You could see the look of disgust on his face. Referee decides to take no action. And there's another left hand goes in low from Munro. And again, Paul Thomas may be just unsighted, perhaps on the blind side. Two definitely strayed low. And another was perilously close. And Morris and Munro looking to try and bully his way back into this fight now. Well, it was good, it was good advice from Morris's corner. They're just saying, you know, make him miss, make him work. You know, because they know that he's going to start to die in terms of uh, his work rate. He's going to really go down in the second half of this fight. So they want him to work quite hard in these early exchanges so that Morris can take over in the second half of this fight. Fourth round. On my card, for what it's worth, I've got Andy Morris defending his title here as being ahead. But Monroe, fit and strong, still very much in it and trying to... trying to find a way back into this good right hand really dug that one in did Morris good solid shot to the body See, the nice thing about Morris uh, also for me John is the fact that he doesn't load up with these punches some of the punches he just places he puts them there to see if they'll land and if they land then he puts a bit of juice on them 
people talk about his great fitness, Andy Morris. He certainly looked very drained at the weigh-in yesterday, and I wonder if that might be a factor as the fight unfolds. He's a big featherweight, is Morris. In fact, they're both big lads for the nine-stone limit. Morris looked extremely, extremely drained by the process of boiling himself down to that weight, although he does look OK tonight, I have to say. And one of the things about him, people talk about his great fitness, but there's an economy of movement about him. He doesn't waste a lot in the ring. Good work that from Munro though, back he comes and certainly his work rate has raised in this round as Randall Munro, he was given stern words by his corner and he's upped his game. He took a right hand to the body early on just before this exchange John which he didn't like, Morris has got a very good tactic, he's working really good tactics at the moment, he's made Munro work hard in this round and you'd expect Morris to really pile on the pressure in the next round. Well Munro has scored plenty of shots in this round whether or not they've been clean shots or not that's for the judges to tell it's tight defense from Morris but Munro's perhaps had his best round so far another good round there from the challenger the taller man from Leicester stands around about five foot eight five foot nine good right hand though from Morris in the closing seconds little reminder to Munro tried to force the pace with body shots and tried to sap the resolve of Morris but he got a good shot back as he did so and we go now into the next round Andy Morris defending his British featherweight champion the 23 year old from Withenshaw on the south side of Manchester is ahead at least the way we're reading it at the moment but Munro came back into it in the last round and there again you see he's up on his toes full of energy and that great conditioning that he boasted he's showing that well the champion prepared to meet fire with fire where the challenge is, is concerned you know oh good shot by the champion lovely right hand right hand from Andy Morris and Morris looking cool and composed as ever interesting fight though and he's certainly not having it all his own way that's good work again from Munro Mike Shinfield his manager was saying to him between rounds let's see you plant some body shots let's see you try and bring Morris's gloves down let's see how fit he really is and if he is tight at the weight then that would be the way to see it good exchange again would just like to see the champion tuck that chin down when he starts moving back you know he's moving really really well but it just needs to tuck that chin down because that's when uh, Monroe seems to be at his most dangerous Monroe is very much still a live challenger that's a good straight right from Morris as I said that but Monroe still keeps coming forward and still keeps trying to wail away with those hooks to the body and if Morris has been tight at the weight then they're the sort of shots which are going to maybe give him problems we'll see that's a good straight left as well from Munro Morris just starting to mark up a little bit around the left eye just a little bit of bruising under that left eye around the left cheekbone I think pace is key in this fight where the champion's concerned he has to stay busy you know He's got to just keep piling up the points, keep putting these points in the bag, keep backing the challenger up as best he can. Key phase of the fight, you sense. Munro has come on a little bit more strongly in the last two rounds. Is he going to be able to maintain his work rate? Is Morris going to be able to find the answers to repel this super fit challenger from Leicester? Fought in great spirit. We've not seen too much of the referee, have we? No, not at all, John. Champion really trying to work the challenger's body. Well now, who's going to find the eye-catching last 15 seconds? Will it be the champion? It has been in several of the rounds so far. I've got Sir Morris just edging this one, but Monroe certainly come back into it. And it's a it's a tight sort of fight at this stage. That's a good left hand from Monroe in the closing stages of the round.
crowd here in Edinburgh thoroughly enjoying this British featherweight title fight. Andy Morris against Rendell Munro. Morris in the blue shorts. Munro, the taller, darker-skinned fighter from Leicester. And Munro is just starting to work his way back into this fight, we reckon. You've got it by a round, Duke. I've got one round up to Andy Morris uh, thus far, John. Well, it's that sort of fight. It's a tight one, and it's going to be a close one in several of the rounds and difficult for the judges to score it, I reckon, so far. It's a real good even fight up until this point. But you would expect in the second half of this fight at least the champion to just start to, to edge away on sheer work volume. Good body shot from Morris, and another one, really bent his knees and dug in that right hand. And he's trying to fire his way back into this fight now. He's just lost his momentum a little bit. He started very brightly with Andy Morris, but Monroe's fitness is carrying him well. Remember, he's never been past six rounds, Rendell Monroe, and here we are in the sixth. Morris has been the 12-round distance. Well, and also, you know, it's hard fighting southpaws. It really is, John. You know, you've got to just imagine you've got like a mirror image in front of you where everything that Monroe's doing is back to front. So you have to keep your concentrations as high as they can possibly be. Keep moving around to your normal, natural way of your, of your left hand and just keep moving around that way. Just fight your kind of a fight. Because if you try to adapt to the southpaw style uh, in, in the fight, you can get lost mentally. Morris needs to get through this one if his ambitions are going to come to fruition. Monroe, of course, will have very much different ideas, but the European title's been made vacant. It's been given up by Nicky Cook. He's going to be fighting a world title eliminator before too long. And the vacant title being fought by Cyril Thomas of France and Alberto Servide of Italy. Thomas would be the favourite to win that one. And uh, that would potentially be a, a fight somewhere down the line for either of these two men. If Monroe were able to upset the form some way, or maybe if Morris is able to prevail now in the as we move towards the second half of this fight. It's a close one. Well, Morris is getting through really well with the jab and this just constant pressure. It's well-educated pressure. He's not running in. He's just coming in just at a steady pace, popping the jab really well, leading off with a right hand like that. And it brings good success for him. A couple of body shots, though, from Munro. Were scoring shots before then. And it's a concerted effort to work away at the Morris body. That's clearly a predetermined plan. Another close round, this one. And Munro just finishing it, perhaps slightly the stronger. Well, there we go. Six rounds completed. It's close, certainly. Morris bossed much of that round, but then back came Munro and landed some really good hurtful body shots in the closing stages. There's the Morris corner, Bob Shannon leading things with the uh, vaguely trendy haircut in the centre of picture. Well, it, again, it's good advice that they're giving Morris. They're saying to him, don't stand in front of him, give him plenty of angles, move in and out and stay busy. And there's the other corner, yeah, the yeah, furrowed yeah. brow of Mike yeah. Shinfield, father of Jason Shinfield, who's right in front of him. There's as Duke scores it at the moment by just the one point for Morris. That last round, I thought Munro just edged it, and I'd give it absolutely dead level in that case. So it's that sort of fight, Duke. It's a close one, and it's all to go for. Slightly the taller figure, sponsored by a Leicester hairdresser. Hence the flashy look there. And he got KO as one of the things which has been carved into his hair at the back, or cut into his hair, I should say. Well, he's not a big puncher, you know. I mean, that's that's pretty, uh, pretty quite a bold statement from him. Um, you know, whether that goes out to Andy. Andy Morris, we're about to find that out. But uh, he said seven, didn't he? He said that was his lucky, his lucky number, and we're in the seventh round now. A lot of pressures on him then to actually perform that. He's got to carry that out. He should be taking the fight to the champion. 
Doesn't usually work, does it? I remember commentating on Lennox Lewis and Evander Holyfield a few years ago, and Holyfield had told everybody, but everybody, and actually talked himself into believing that it was his divine right to win in the third round. He made a huge, huge effort, and of course it didn't come, and the rest, as we say, is history. Good body shot from Morris, good fast hands. Yeah, you'd expect this from the champion now. I said the second half of this fight should be the most telling part of the fight. The champion's been the distance before, knows what's required. Well, we don't know just how good Monroe is. And Monroe himself, I'm sure he's trained and trained endlessly building up his fitness for this contest but it's a little bit of a psychological thing I guess Duke when you move into championship level for the first time you've got to bring your, your own sense of self-belief into it as well it's not only just physical conditioning it's what's between your ears absolutely the mental conditioning that you need you know you, you, you say to yourself you've got to pace yourself you know because you know you've got the potential 12 round distance to get through so you, you pace yourself try not to land anything you know, without any undue force. You're trying to conserve energy all the time. Between rounds, incidentally, Cornham men were looking towards us saying, how have you got it? How do you see it? So they're not too sure at this stage. You know, it's a difficult one to score when you're actually in the thick of it in the corner, and a tough one to score when, you, when you're actually commentating on it. We reckon that Morris might now. Is he edging this seventh round? I had it dead level, Duke, before this. He's just perhaps maintaining his form a little bit better. Good sweet right hand there from Morris. And the retort from Munro, he tried to throw instant punches back by way of revenge, but they were all taken on the glove. Well, Monroe's work in this round for me is just looking a little bit shabby. A bit sloppy. Yeah, a little bit shabby, John. A little bit sloppy, you just said there. Not quite getting his punches together. You know, now the doubt is starting to go through his mind. You know, I've got, I've got another five rounds after this. Have I put in too much too soon? Seventh round over. Another close one, but perhaps Morris was just the more compact. Maybe he was just close enough with his punches and his work rate to edge it. It was a close one. But is the belief starting to sap away there from Rendell Munro? Let's see what's going on in the corner. Yeah, you're feeling good. No, I'm feeling strong, yeah. Provide it from somewhere then. Let's have a drink. Let's have a drink. Let's have a spit. Yeah. Let's have a shot. Let's trains up in summer coats with the Shinfields. It's in the uh, north side of Derbyshire. Good shot that was, good right hand. And here's the Morris corner. From champ now, come on. Very cool and composed, don't they? Well, we move on now into the eighth round. And this is where a few experts thought that Morris would start to dictate matters. Maybe that he would, his championship experience and knowledge of going the 12 round distance would start to pay. But Munro's still right in his face. Well, it's, it's a massive opportunity for Munro, obviously. You know, all he can see is that British title. But obviously, he's going to have to take care of business and um, find a way to, to slow Andy Morris down. He's Morris got a... is just keeping on and on. There's no sense at all that his work rate is slowing. He, this stage, he looks slightly the sharper fighter, I think. Yeah, it looks stronger to me as well, John. He's planting his feet now. He's trying to actually out punch the puncher, if you like. Monroe stumbled there, and as he did so, just for a moment, I thought Morris was going to unload the whole kitchen sink at Monroe as he was going to try and punish him. But as he stumbled and Monroe lost his footing, he's trying to come back with body shots, but he just sensed that the tiredness perhaps is beginning to set in. And is there a little bit of swelling around one of Monroe's eyes? Let's take a closer look at that one. We see from another direction. This is a good round for the champion because these punches that he's landing are really telling. He slowed his pace, just watch what he does when he starts to throw his punches. Yeah, the right eye is starting to mark up, I think, on Munro. The champion plants his feet, he's looking to put shot with his, with, with his own right hand. He plants his feet and he's really starting to sink these punches in.
Monroe needs to get his hands up. That's inviting Morris to come in, but it's a dangerous game to play, and there's a solid right hand from the champion. And another one, and that's rocked Monroe right back onto the ropes in front of us. And Morris senses that his man might be ready to go. He's landing a launching a big attack here. Now, how strong is Monroe? And he smiles at Morris as he comes bravely back off the ropes, and he's trying to rally, trying to fire back leather of his own. Has, Mon has Morris gambled a little too much there? Did he throw too much and will he have punched himself out with that attack or can he now look for another opportunity? Champion's got to be a little bit careful because he's got a big featherweight in front of him who can absorb shots. Two good left hands from Morris and he's looking again now to, to mount a sustained attack but Monroe takes it bravely and lands a left hand as he came off the ropes but he looks a little bit unsteady and a little bit tired to me Uppercut from Munro though, that was a good shot, right hand found its way through Morris's guard and Morris now wants to hold on and he's talking a little bit to the referee Paul Thomas and saying come on get this guy out of my face. Well it's Munro that's hurt and he deliberately oh, hurt. Good right hand, good right hand from Morris. Yeah fantastic onslaught from the champion. That's the best round for Andy Morris so far and Munro he sinks back onto his onto his stool and that did not come one moment too soon. Let's see how Barry McGuigan's scoring this and seeing this so far. Barry? Yeah, well John and, and uh, Duke I thought it was going to be a, a scorch of this fight and these two kids are absolutely brilliant. Morris is really beginning to sit down on his punches. He's had a look at him, switched off in the fifth round. Right, right, right. I have it a bit wider than you. I still have Morris, you know, <laughs> maybe three rounds ahead, four rounds ahead. But he, this is the round where he starts to sit down on his punches, bang his shots in. This kid's getting better every single time. I agree with Duke. There are times he's a little bit, his hands are a little bit low, but uh, he really is impressing me, this young man. He's getting better and better. And uh, uh, Monroe is doing his very best, but I just don't think he's good enough. Morris has got the boxing skills and he's got the fitness as well and for me that was his best round of the fight so far there are some really good solid right hands thudded into the face of Rendell Munro now is Munro's fitness going to bring him back into this fight even at this late stage or has the tide now gone irrevocably in the direction of Andy Morris you can expect Munro to really sort of dig his feet into the ground and try and fight the champion try and beat him at his own game but he could be coming unstuck at the seams here because what the champion's doing is still planting his feet but he's still just being staying out of harm's way just enough to land his punches in the ninth round 12 rounds is the championship distance could well be that it's going to have to go all the way i wonder and munro seems to have recovered well he started quite brightly but is he going to be able to sustain it? And Morris is looking to unload again with those hurtful right hands, which so dominated the eighth. Good right hand again, good shot, great hand speed. But the champion put a lot into that last round. You know, he may still be just a little bit arm-weary from the onslaught that he put together. Well, Randall Munro, if he senses that, will certainly relish the opportunity to come right back into it and Morris's work rate has perhaps dropped just a little bit at this stage perhaps taking a little bit of a breather and just content to cover up and let Munro come towards him well, he's just got to be a little bit more cute though because Munro's fighting quite well quite well on the retreat Champion Good uppercut just, from uh, Munro that time, right hand. Yeah, the champion just needs to shorten his punches on the inside. He needs to bring the uppercuts into play, followed by little hooks on the inside now. Because Munro's absolutely wide open to those shots. It's a good call though, Duke, that he was looking a little bit arm weary, and certainly Munro has had more success in this ninth round. Remember, if you're just joining us, got uh, European Championship action coming up later on and the great Edinburgh favourite Alex Arthur defending his crown first though we've got the fascinating conclusion to this British featherweight title fight is the champion Andy Morris in the blue trunks going to be able to hang on to his title or is Rendell Munro somehow going to be able to produce a superhuman effort to turn this around in the last few rounds of this fight at the moment though we've got Morris ahead 
Brave effort, though, this from Munro Duke. Well, Munro's doing excellent in this round. I mean, he was hurting it at the end of the last round, but he's really, you know, bit on that gum shield and just, he's so determined to get through this fight. Here comes Morris again, though. And he's, every time he lands with big shots, you sense that Munro is feeling every punch which lands and he's starting to feel the pace of this fight. Big finish to it from Morris again, but that was a brave effort from Munro. Morris, though, looks to me as though he's maybe doing enough. Have you got it scoring now, Duke? Well, I've still got the champion ahead by a round. There's nothing in it, John. I really, you know, this one's really sort of nip and tuck. Monroe's doing a really good job. Well, he did at least in that round. Morris by three, you've got it there as the tally, Duke, 88 to 85. I think I'd probably agree with that. I think Morris probably is doing enough. There's Alex Arthur having his uh, hands bound by trainer Brian Clements, ready for his European title fight. That's coming up next in the ring, his mandatory defence against Sergei Gulekovic from Minsk in Belarus. Meantime, here's Rendell Munro, and he is now having to dig deep. My word, this is coming round to the moment when all the training, all the training and all the road work, all those hours in the gym, this is where he really needs it. I just feel that the, the champion's just slightly higher work rate and, and cleaner punching is obviously just that's what's keeping him ahead in this fight. Andy Morris only previously faced one southpaw as uh, a pro, Jez Wally. He won that fight on points over six rounds earlier in his career. And uh, here we think he's doing enough but uh, it doesn't really matter what we think it's down to the judges of course if it goes the distance and Munro has certainly done well whatever you say whatever the outcome of the fight he's acquitted himself well it's a big step up in class and they always say it's an old boxing adage you should never ever write off an undefeated fighter he's not been the 12 round distance before but he never tasted defeat and he's fought with a huge amount of pride yeah, it's been a very, very good fight, John, as this one. Good shot Tan there. from Munro. Yeah, good it's shot. A buzz of applause from his corner. Dave Caldwell, his trainer, like that one. Oh, it's up to the champion now to meet him up. Oh, good right hand from Morris. Good little straight right hand, short straight right, and it rocked back the head of Munro. Champion's got to come back now. He's really got to just start pulling the pressure and really show Munro why he is the champion. trying to wait, wheel away with hooks towards the body it's down to guts and desire as much as anything now change of stance there from Monroe yep he's got to switch to orthodox now he's gone back into the southpaw stance back into the right hand lead he should stick to what he does best you know stay stay right handed Monroe looking slightly tired now again he just has these little phases in the fight where he just loses his, his composure where the champion keeps his guard really well. Been fought in great spirit this contest. Good right uppercut there from Morris. Munro takes it well though. So the champion keeps his guard at all times. He keeps his hands up, cupped around his head, even when he's finished round his combinations. Andy Morris wants a fight with Steve Foster, the WBU champion. He's been calling Foster out. I wonder if this is going to propel him any closer to that. Good right hand from, from Morris. Monroe, though, just clipped him with a left hand, left hand counter. Well, the champion constantly on the move. Constantly showing up to movement. Right, let's find out what's happening in those corners. First we'll go into the Andy Morris corner, I think. Bob Shannon, the trainer. Why, why are you running there? It's a sparring session, aren't you? It's not a sparring session, this is a British cycle, isn't it? What did you say to me? You have to kill me for it. Eh? What? He's out working you. Why are you letting him out work you? They're all arm shots, then. Get the arse at that. <laughs> They're all arm shots, aren't they? Everything's arm shots. 
it, push it. Come on, you've got to go on, it's a man under you. Well, they're saying that he's being yeah, outworked. Yeah, In the other right. corner, it's the shin fields with Munro. He's side. got to be in front of Just Randle. You've got to right. step it up. You've last got to do rounds. Last two rounds. Right. Big. Last two, two rounds. rounds. Yeah. Right. Can you do that? Yeah, man. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. Come on, you've got to work on that. Come on, you've got to work on that. You've got to work on that. Come on, you've got to work on that. Come on, you've got to work on that. Come on, you've got to work on that. Keep it tight and let him... Well, Mike and Jason Shinfield saying you've got to win the last two rounds big. Can you do it? The answer is yeah, man. And so far as Andy Morris is concerned, it's not a sparring session. Get in there and fight. Well, you know, the corner really just trying to psych him up mentally, get him back into the trenches, get him back working hard. <laughs> I don't see it as that. I just see Morris is just, just, just been the better boxer, the better all-round boxer. But Monroe is still trying to outwork him, trying to produce one last grandstand finish over the last two rounds and he's throwing punches he's not uh, he's not in any sense taking a breather here speared by a solid left hand arm punches as much as anything but he's still working away yeah Monroe's got to be careful because he's he's putting in a, a big attack and Morris is a good punch picker so he's got to be careful not to get picked off when he starts to make his attack both boxers a little bit banged up now around the face. Morris back onto his bike, staying away from Munro. Good left hand from Morris, good work. And the two land simultaneously, and I get the impression that as they did so, the greater power just lay with the champion, just the greater force, planted his feet that little bit better, delivered the punch with a little bit more intent. Well, you know, these rounds, these last uh, few rounds of the fight of what they call the championship rounds. This is where they expect the champion to obviously really pull out all the stops. Monroe is going into, oh, he's in unknown territory. Spearing, though, Morris with one, two, three jabs, doubling up on the punches. And it would, a lot of these punches he's thrown in this round have not been thrown with any great power. But goodness me, he's thrown a number of them as Monroe. He's really gone for it here trying to just outwork Morris and somehow find a way to win this round and he's doing so I think he's throwing more shots yeah he's having a very good round John both boxers are having a good round but the harder punches again come from the champion two left hands from Morris stung Munro but still he comes forward bravely and showing a huge amount of commitment and resolve Little five-year-old son Tyler will be sitting at home somewhere watching this, cheering Dad on. Andy Morris's youngster Mason, maybe he's doing exactly the same. Challenger desperately tired though, but just willing himself on, pushing himself forward. Another old cliche, it's a hard way to make a living boxing, but this fight really exemplifies that. These two have had to dig so very, very deep. And we move now into the closing 20 seconds of the 11th round and it's been, I think, just by work rate around for Munro. Morris is starting to try to unload here, but Munro, I think, has perhaps edged this one just by volume of punches. Yeah, I'll give you that one, John. Champion's got a bit of a nosebleed and a mouse underneath the left eye. What a good round. What a very good round. And the two who snarled at each other at the weigh-in yesterday they touch as they go back to their respective corners and there's a little clap of appreciation around the back for the champion Andy Morris from his gallant challenger Rendell Munro there's Morris in the corner look at how you feel how are you going to feel after the fight when you're going back you've got to win these two rounds you've got to do it so many punches being landed Left hand from Morris, but look at the number that Munro throws there. Not great, not great shots. No one of them a terrific shot, but he just threw yeah, so right, many. Not two minutes, three minutes. Three minutes, three minutes. Three minutes, it's dead close, Randall. Well, well, you, Randall. When, you're, 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 when you're from chin down. Right. Chin down. Oh, oh, yeah, chin down. Yeah, chin down. This is yours. It's been a really good scrap this one, very good fight indeed and they touch gloves and the final three minutes of this British featherweight title fight are underway. Will it be the champion Andy Morris in the blue shorts or will it somehow, even at this late stage, be Rendell Munro? Well, watch what the champion's doing. Munro's fighting with 
without a guard than the champion's fighting with a guard. So I guess the cleanest shots are going to come from the champion because he's got the chin protected pretty much all the time. He's not prepared to take anything or leave anything to chance. With Monroe's fighting with a lot more desperation. Monroe throwing with des fighting with desperation. But goodness me, is he fighting with desire? A lot at stake here for Simpson, for Morris rather. The chance, perhaps, of a European title fight if he can come through this for Monroe. Well, it's the chance to really upset the odds and to beat one of the brightest or we thought and has been touted as one of the brightest talents coming through in British boxing and Munro bravely comes forward again look at this flurries of punches being thrown from both men that's nice quality boxing as you said John from both fighters nice two-fisted attack from both boxers the one thing you can guarantee there's going to be a big hug for the two men at the end of this they'll not forget this in a hurry Munro is bravely coming forward Morris is being reduced to the role of counter puncher good left hand from Morris it's been a really grueling fight it's been a hard fight, pace uh, fight the champion for me John just doing enough in this round the cleaner punches the harder work rate It's sort of egg on your face time, isn't it? If you stick your neck out too much and say how this is going to go. They really have both come out of it with enormous credit. Yeah, it's been a, a real good, a very good effort from Munro. Not really been found once in, in too many departments. Good left hand from Munro. His right eye now is a little bit of a mess, is Rendell Munro. But there's plenty of bruising as well around the face of the champion Andy Morris it's really been an energy draining sort of fight this one last 30 seconds who's going to produce the fireworks right up to the bell Frank Maloney is urging Andy Morris on he's leaning through the ropes shouting at his fighter Morris as manager Frank Maloney and he looks an anxious man he's almost throwing every blow with uh, Andy Morris Monroe though, he won the 11th and I think he's doing enough to win the 12th as well but what an excellent last round and what an excellent fight and the referee Paul Thomas who's referee goodness knows how many world title fights through his career he leads the applause and rightly so that was a terrific little scrap, really was really was a good fight, you know, brilliant effort by, by both boxers you know, I'd, I'd give marks out, I'd give them both 10 out of 10 Well, it's uh, anxious moments now for both men. Munro closed the gap for me in those last couple of rounds, Duke. I know you scored the last round to Morris, I scored it to Munro. And in that case, I've only got it by the odd rounder, so it's a close one. But I think, you know, I think if I had to bet one way or the other, maybe Munro's just, uh, maybe Morris has just done enough. But they both come out of it with enormous credit. And the applause coming from the Munro corner for their supporters who've made their way down from Leicester and Morris as well plenty of supporters made their way across from Manchester for this and what an excellent fight it's been and now it's anxious moments as we wait for the verdict of the judges and the master of ceremonies Michael Pass I think has now got the results in his hand and we wait for the referee to draw both boxers to the centre of the ring and I think we can now find out how this fight has gone. Michael Pass is the MC. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a unanimous decision. Judges Phil Edwards and Victor Lachlan are in full agreement. They see the contest 116 to 113. And Judge Howard Foster scores the contest 117 to 112 for the winner by unanimous decision and still the featherweight champion of Great Britain from Withenshaw, Andy Morris.
Willie Morris gets the verdict. The 23-year-old from Manchester please, wins please, once please, again. Please, but I think he had a harder please, fight please, than he please, believed please, he was going please, to get. Please, he had to dig very deep there. And the judges' verdicts, well, it showed please, that please, Morris was the winner. I thought five rounds was a little bit wide. Three rounds, I wouldn't argue too much with that one. But I think Frank Maloney is a relieved man. And Andy Morris is still the British featherweight champion. Unanimous decision. A couple of judges by three rounds, one by a massive five, but a, a terrific fight for the British featherweight title. Don't forget, to, still to come, we're going to be looking up to Audley Harrison and live here, Alex Arthur defending his European crown as well. Reaction to that little cracker, though, coming right up. Andy Morris, still the uh, British uh, featherweight champion. How hard was that fight for you? Uh, yeah, it was hard. It was a tough fight. Um, I made him look better than he was. No disrespect to Rendon Munro. Uh, he came to win. But I just couldn't get out of second gear. I had a few hiccups in the gym on the way. Not making any excuses, but I just could not set myself today in that ring. You know what I mean? I just, the time was out. I felt slow. I was getting caught with shots I never get caught with. You know, uh, but... No, no disrespect to Rendell, he came to win. You know what I mean? He came, done the 12 rounds, he was a tough cooker. But you must have been, been impressed, um, I mean, certainly people watching you, they liked your movement, they liked a lot of your body shots as well. Yeah, well, if they like that tonight, you know what I mean? I've got a hell of a lot more to show because that, in my eyes, was, a, was a, not a great performance. And who do you want now? Is it a, a Mr Foster Jr that you're looking for? Um, I think, you know, 12, 12 to 18 months' time down, you know, I could, that fight could happen. Uh, he's on a WBU route, I'm on a British title. We've got a clash sometime, you know what I mean? Let's build the fight up to a big fight. Well, you had a particularly impressive round in the eights, and uh, I must say, looking at bits and pieces of the action there, I thought you might have stopped him there at one stage. Uh, yeah, you know what I mean? It, it, it was, like I said, he was a tough guy. He came back from that. Um, like I said, I just couldn't get out of second gear to go up to that third and fourth to finish him. Um, but like I said, all, all respect to Ren Rendell, you know what I mean? He, uh, he stood his ground there. Well, there was a, a bit of ill feeling but before the fight, uh, but the great thing about this game, that's all ironed out and forgotten now, isn't it? Yeah, you can, you know, you can say all, oh, whatever you want outside the ring, but as soon as that bell goes, it's only just me and him, you know what I mean? And action spills louder than words, and these what do the action. OK, so just finally from you, the message from your camp is, uh, you ain't seen nothing yet, job done, but I can do a lot better. Hell of a lot better. Good action, though. Good entertainment. Thanks very much indeed, and congratulations to all your corner as well. Well done, mate. Thank you.